Hello, everyone. My name is Bauman, and um, similar to Emily, this is my first um, uh, conference talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about modernizing a legacy app using Windows containers and Kubernetes. Uh, I work for Telstar Health, which is the, um, the largest Australian software provider for aged and care, uh, sorry, aged and disability care, um, pharmacies and hospitals. Uh, I'm going to talk about a particular product in Tesla Health, which is called Clinica. Um, it's, it's a tool, it's a very useful tool for aged care providers in Australia that uh, they, can, um, they can use to manage um, the clinical documentation and all the administration work uh, for their residents. Um, it, this particular tool has been around for 15 years and it has got the largest um, market share in Australia. And we have more than 200 clients that are using it. Now, we know that there is a legacy app. What did we want to change in it? If you compare our, our uh, I mean, a single installation of our app with a ship, a ship has got everything that it needs to, to run. Our application is also um, uh, similar to that. I mean, a single installation of our app should have, um, you know, everything that it requires to run, like um, the operating system, which is Windows in this case, IIS, the database, the, the code, and everything else that it requires. However, the, the picture that we are facing at the moment is this. We have 200 different ships running around in our The reason is we have, um, uh, we spin up new, a new VM for all of our um, clients. Unfortunately, the app have a, a multi-tenancy uh, feature and we have to do it this way. Obviously, this is not a, um, not a uh, picture that we want to maintain um, these days. And we want to get back to our picture of, you know, having one ship. All right. Now, why did we want to make this change? Well, there are many reasons. Um, maintenance is the big one. Um, you know, we, it's not easy to maintain 200 uh, different virtual machines. Even some of our clients, they have their own on-prem um, as well. Cost saving. Um, is important, better performance, scale, scalability, security, making it easier to put for, for ourselves, better disaster recovery plan, higher avail availability, all of these eventually will lead to a better customer experience. Uh, before I continue, I just want to quickly mention about mention the technologies that are uh, being used in uh, this particular product. The development of this app started 15 years ago with ASP Classic, and over the years there has been a lot of um, uh, there have been a lot of transformations and different uh, technologies added to the um, to tech stack. Fortunately, we don't have um, ASP Classic, but we have um, some legacy code in which is written in ASP Web Form and AngularJS. So we know that there is a bit of legacy code over there and it's not, I mean, and those ones are not easy to change um, considering the fact that we, we have active clients using our application. So we, we know that we wanted to uh, transform our infrastructure, but what are, what are options? We don't want to make a huge changes in the code and we wanted to go with um, uh, platform as a service offering uh, from one of the cloud providers. And we are using Azure already. So our options is, uh, essentially came down to two, Azure App Services and Azure Kubernetes. We chose AKS, and the main reason for that was, again, this uh, picture. We want to have all the releases, all the um, installations for all the clients in, in the same sheet, or as I said, or at least a few of them, not 200 of them, 200 of them. And in the case of AKS, um, Kubernetes will be the captain of our ship. 
challenge was containerizing our app. Um, um, as I said, the, the you know the all the technology stack that you saw are quite old. Some of them are quite old, and we are using ASP.NET Framework, not ASP.NET um, Core or ASP.NET Five. Um, so uh, we we had to go with, with Windows containers. In order to make sure that our app is going to work in Windows Container, um, in, in the first iteration, we decided to a proof of concept. And in order to do that, we, we use a uh, tool called image to Docker, uh, which is a uh, PowerShell module that can look into your, um, your, you know, your virtual machine that you are running your ASP.NET um, application on, and it can help you to build, uh, build your container. So we did it, we, we used this tool and we were able to containerize our application and we, we, we ran it and all went fine. We, we did some smoke testing and yeah, all, all looked um, uh, promising. So that was easy. Uh, I wish it was that simple. Anyway, um, this, this, this picture is, uh, is a simplified uh, uh, photo of our, our solution, the, the, the legacy code that the legacy applications that I'm talking about. And, it's, and it has got many, um, many features, uh, sorry, many libraries, many assemblies, many folders, and all of them are um, kind of um, related to each other. So the very first question that we asked ourselves was, is if we put everything in a single container? That's probably okay, but instead we thought, maybe just do a bit of refactoring here and just uh, put a line, draw a line, somewhere in, um, you know, in, uh, in, in this solution and divide the whole solution into two. And let's call one of them legacy and other one model. So the, the way that we did uh, this um, dividing was, you know, we, we know that there are some uh, technologies that are quite old and it, we, if, if we want to convert them to, a new, to newer technologies, we have, a, we have some limited options or no options. Those ones in legacy, and um, to be honest, there's, there's not enough. I mean, not so many development happening on the legacy code, and we will be focused more on the on the modern um, side of things. So we will um, we ended up uh, ended up with two containers. Um, so in this way, we we have room to upgrade our memory, uh, sorry, our, our modern code in the close future, and at some point we can. Um, rewrite uh, the legacy stuff, legacy stuff and get rid of them. Another thing that we had to use um, for, for our ASP.NET um, application was configuration builders. The reason that we, uh, so it's, it's actually a NuGet package that um, I think available from .NET Framework uh, 4.7.1. And um, it's, it's, it's a way that it's, it's, it's gonna help you um, to inject your configuration values to your containers as environment variable. So you um, you have your environment, you, you um, define your environment variables for a, for your container and just inject them to the container. Then container um, your sorry your application that is running in the container can pick them up um, and use them. One uh, another challenge was. Um, uh, running our application in a load balance environment. And why this is important, um, the reason is, you know, in, in Kubernetes is quite common that you have a replica of your, um, your application uh, or a single release. So your application should be able to work behind the load balancer. Some example, we had, um, we had some local files logging for, I mean, application logging that we, we needed to, uh, we had to get rid of and we used um, Azure uh, App Insight um, in server, uh, instead of those ones. We had some in-memory caching uh, to increase the performance. We removed those ones and we, we used Redis instead. Also, there were some places that we were saving some temporary files to be processed later on. We had to get rid of those ones as well. Along the way, we actually came uh, across some less known issues like, um, you know, the places that we were using th some third party certificates or licenses to with other systems. We had to uh, change those ones as well. Um, also, we 
we realized that there there is a side application that we 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 were we used to run um, using Windows Task Scheduler, not IIS. That didn't go very well with configuration builders that we were using. So instead, we use uh, um, Kubernetes cron jobs um, to handle this uh, particular scenario. When when uh, in general, when we talk about Windows containers, there are some uh, they have some limitations. Uh, in this slide, I'm just talking about um, uh, the, the limitations that uh, that are important. Some of the limitations that are important in Kubernetes and AKS. The very first one is um, um, you know you need Linux uh, master node. So Kubernetes is a is an orchestration uh, tool for containers. Um, and it needs a, a Linux master node. It, it needs at least a, a one a virtual machine uh, that is um, using Linux. But you can you can have more virtual machines that um, that are on uh, that that have Windows Windows operating system. So if you are using uh, Windows containers, you will end up in a hybrid approach. You need to have uh, Linux and Windows machines side side by side, which is perfectly okay if you're using cloud provider like a AKS. But if you are uh, running your structure, then there is a bit of uh, work there. Out of memory exceptions are different in um, Linux and and um, and Windows. The reason that this is important is um, um, if you're if your Linux VM is um, out of memory, uh, then it can um, it can kill some of the pods that are running in your cluster based on some criteria. So a pod in Kubernetes is essentially a process that is running your container. But the same story doesn't happen in Windows. And if um, your Windows machine is out of memory, it will start paging and it will uh, use the disk for that. So what you get is uh, just uh, some um, performance um, uh, issues on, on your application step. AKS supports Windows Server 2019 or above, and only process isolation mode in Windows container is supported. So this means that your, um, I mean, the version of operating system that you use to build your container should match with the version of operating system that you um, you use to run your container. And for AKS, it has to be 20, Windows Server 2019 or above. Network policies are, are another good feature, uh, feature of Kubernetes. Um, they are sort of some sort of rules that you set on, on your cluster um, that, uh, that can, um, can um, can block some communications that, that are happening uh, within your cluster among the pods. Unfortunately, that supported in AKS for Windows nodes, um, but they are uh, supported for Linux nodes. Uh, but I, I, I had a look at Microsoft Roadmap, and I think this is something that they're going to uh, release in the future. Some learnings, if you, if you are, um, if you can, just use Linux containers. If if uh, your application is uh, is in a shape that you can um, convert it to .NET Core or .NET Five, do so. Otherwise, um, Windows containers are something that you can work uh, with as well, depending on on your scenario. But think about the future and think about how you can upgrade uh, your solution. If um, if you are thinking to upgrade the infrastructure for a legacy application, most probably the the processes that are that exist in your organizations are also legacy. So think about the, the amount of changes that you're uh, you're going to introduce. One example was uh, for for our scenario, we we changed the infrastructure, but we didn't um, we didn't change the um, you know, CI CD tools. Uh, there, were, there was no reason actually to change those ones. But if you are removing a feature or tool, think about the alternative. Another example um, from our scenario was um, 
when when we presented our solution to our application support, the very first question that they asked us was, uh, how can how can they log in into a server and and check the iOS logs because they used to do that a lot. And we said, well, you can do that, but it's not that straightforward. Uh, so instead, we explain them how can they they get the the fish they want using Azure App Insight, and also we we stream the iOS logs for them in container logs. Uh, then they were able to use um, Kubernetes dashboard or Azure portal to see those logs as well. And eventually, there's always something to surprise you. So be ready for it. Thank you, everyone. And here is um, the link to plan your Azure SAG and my speaker code that you can use for it. If there's any question, uh, please uh, put them in the chat window and I will answer them. Thank you. Thanks, mate. That was great.